guys, it is April from Getting Hugger With It. So today is day four of Every Day in May. And one of the reasons I decided to do Every Day May is because it's my birthday month. And by the time that this is going up, today is my birthday. So my birthday is May 4th. I am a Taurus. I am like full blown a Taurus. The only Tori Torian, Torian? quality that I don't have is like being really good with money. Uh, which is sad. I wish that I had that trait instead of being bullheaded um, and indulgent. But that's what I was born with. So uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the books that I read in April. Uh, I had a pretty good reading month. I think it started off better than it ended but I wanted to share with you what I read this April. So let's get the DNF out of the way. I could not finish reading In a Cottage in a Wood by Cast Green. I was so excited about this book. It's a thriller. Um, this is about a woman who is walking alone at night across a bridge. She happens to see another woman coming across the bridge towards her. This woman presses this piece of paper inside her hand and then this woman jumps off the bridge. Uh, and it turns out that this woman who's jumped off the bridge gives the main character her cottage. And the main character goes and stays at the cottage and realizes that it's a little bit strange. Something is going on. There are bars on the window. It's a bit creepy. But you know, I was not creeped out at all. Like this is, this is thrillers for newbies. Um, this is a thriller for someone who is absolutely petrified of being scared. I, and I don't think I'd even recommend it to newbies. Um, so yeah, I just couldn't do it. So I did enough to that. Um, but luckily I read some pretty amazing books other than that, mostly. So we're going to start in with one of the books that I thought was absolutely brilliant. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I buddy read this with Katie from Life Between Words. We had never buddy read anything with one another before. And, you know, we comment on each other's channels all the time, and I really love Katie. So it was so nice to do that, finally. And I'm glad that we read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This was a really wonderful book. Now, it has so much hype on BookTube. I was a bit nervous going into it of how I would feel, but you really can't put this down. I had a really hard time putting it down. I ended up giving it four stars. This has incredible twists and turns. Uh, I was extremely shocked by some of them. Uh, the writing was really great. Um, you feel incredibly connected to the characters and yet they're not always likable characters. That's something to consider if you absolutely must have likable characters. This might not be the book for you. Uh, but I, I even though I didn't like some of the characters, I was so tied to them all. I really, really enjoyed this book. And I think since I've read this, I've already picked up two more of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. Now I know that this is the only historical fiction book I believe that Taylor Jenkins Reid's has actually um, written. And I am hoping that she writes more historical fiction because she did an amazing job. Oh, I totally forgot to tell you what it's about. You probably already know because it's so big, but this is about a Hollywood movie icon, Evelyn Hugo, and we follow her throughout her career in Hollywood as an actress. Um, like when she's just starting out up until her old age, she invites this journalist who writes for magazines. She's a new journalist. She invites her over to her home and says, I want you to write my biography and I'm not leaving anything out. It's all going to be laid out here. And so she starts to go through the story of her life. So good. I also really loved Water for Elephants. This had been on my shelves for so long. 
and I don't know why I didn't pick it up. I think probably because I don't usually like circus books, but I liked this circus book. I gave this four stars. And in this book, we're following Jacob. Our main character is someone who loses his family early on in the book and he hops on board a train. He doesn't know where the train is headed to. He also doesn't know what kind of train it is. And he finds out that it's a circus train and he is hired on to take care of the animals. So we go back and forth in time from Jacob when he's on the circus train as a young man to Jacob as an elderly man. And you know, looking back on his life and not being extremely happy with how things have ended up for him. And uh, I just loved Jacob. I was so tied to the animals. Now, something that you should be aware of is uh, there's some animal cruelty in this. I really struggled to read that, um, but I was still able to do it for some reason. For some reason, I was able to power through and I think probably that reason is that there was Jacob there who loved these animals like you love the animals. You really want them to do well um, and to be happy and healthy. And so does he. And so you know that there's someone there at the circus who's going to try and save all the animals. So that helps. I absolutely loved that book. I gave it four stars. Now I also read Bachelor Nation. <laughs> Watching The Bachelor on TV is my guilty pleasure and I'm not even so guilty about it I just enjoy it so much and I watch all of them I watch The Bachelor I watch The Bachelorette I watch Bachelor in Paradise I watch them all and this book Bachelor Nation is about that uh, reality TV show where it came from you find out all of the stuff about the producers and the people who created the show, where they came from um, personally and also their career path up until that point. And you find out like behind the scenes how, how the whole TV show works and it becomes really clear that the producers on this TV show are slightly evil. That said, I'm still totally going to watch because now anyone who is applying to be on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette will have read Bachelor Nation and will know what they're getting into. Uh, but if you didn't know, it's really difficult and like disturbing some of it. Um, I will say I listened to this on audiobook and I found the narrator extremely annoying. I believe the author narrated the book and I hated her. I really did. Um, so be aware she's extremely annoying. So I would suggest just reading it, reading the physical copy. Next, I finally finished reading Option B. Option B was written by Cheryl Sandberg. Now she wrote Lean In, uh, which was a huge book um, and very well received about women in the workforce. This is about losing her her husband very suddenly they were on a trip and she lost him and she has two children with him and it's about her trying to move on with her life and what do you do when option a isn't available her idea is to kick the crap out of option b and i took a long time to read this i started reading this in january just after my miscarriage and I just finished it because it's just a hard book to read. Um, so I need to spend some time with it. I got a lot out of it. I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend that if you have someone in your life who has specifically lost their spouse, I would really recommend reading this or giving this to them and also reading it because it's also helpful to see like where they're at in their minds and how you can be a really good friend. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I hope that she's doing well. I'm really happy for her that she wrote this and could help so many other people. Um, next, uh, this is the best book I think I read 
this month is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Now, Michelle McNamara had this true crime blog. She was like on the hunt to try and solve some of the most horrendous crimes. And one of the crimes that she was obsessed with, I think, I think borderline obsessed with is accurate, um, was the Golden State Killer. This man used to go into women's homes. Uh, sometimes he would also target couples. He'd go in and blind them with their flashlight or her, his flashlight. He had a ski mask on so you couldn't see him and he would rape them. Uh, sometimes he would kill people. So I believe that he killed 12 people in total and he was um, known to have been connected with over 50 rapes. And he was just terrifying and they finally caught him in April, which is amazing. It's very sad that Michelle McNamara wasn't there to see him be caught. Michelle McNamara died uh, in 2016 quite suddenly, which is incredibly sad. And um, but I think she'd be really, really happy that he was caught. Uh, yeah. I, I I would so recommend reading this book. Um, she wrote about like 75% of the book and then she died. And so um, people that she had been working with, um, researching about the Golden State Killer, they ended up finishing it for her. So it's really nice. Um, you find out about them in the book and then they kind of take over for her where she left off. And it's interesting because the way that they caught the Golden State Killer was through um, sites, um, I can't remember which site, but like genealogy sites, like uh, 23andMe, you know those sites where you like send them a sample of yourself, of your DNA, um, and then they can kind of pinpoint where you came from and all of that. So uh, so they they used that in the end to catch him. And that was one of the ways that Michelle McNamara had said she believed that he would be caught. And she was right and just so happy for her. Um, strange thing to be happy about, but I, I'm so glad that he was caught after all of that. Definitely go and read I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Now this book is going to actually be turned into a mini series on HBO, like a documentary mini series. So that's in the works, which makes me very, very excited. It's also got an introduction by Gillian Flynn and you know how much I love her. So go and check it out. I'm going to stop gushing about I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Okay. Last book I read uh, for April was the Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. Now, I always like to read Kate Morton in the spring. There is something about her that like just screams spring to me. She reads historical, she writes historical fiction and she does this thing where she bounces back and forth in time. Um, now in this book, I kind of struggled. This is so far my least favorite Kate Morton. And I'm surprised because I think this is most people's favorite Kate Morton. I ended up giving it three stars. We follow, uh, I wanna say three or four main characters and we've got three points in time that we're following people. That's not normal for Kate Morton. Usually we've just got two bouncing back and forth and I think she does best with that. Um, I thought there were a lot of loose ends that didn't get covered and there were lots of bits about people's individual storylines that would be relevant to the story and yet it didn't drive those characters at all. One of our main characters loses her husband and her uh, child. This is not a spoiler in any, in any way. Um, so she loses them and you know we're trying to solve um, why her grandmother um, we're trying to solve where her grandmother came from. Her grandmother was found on a boat uh, and the dock master took her in. And so she's trying to find out where her grandmother came from. And you'd think that like a lost child um, would bring up in her, her lost child. And that didn't happen. 
I also really, really, really struggled with the uh, perception, again, of infertile women. <laughs> what is it about books where women who are struggling with infertility and miscarriage uh, seem to be over and over and over again put into um, the villain category and women who um, get pregnant by accident or get uh, pregnant incredibly quickly they're put into the heroine category and I'm really tired of that it is the most hurtful trope uh, it's really it's not even an annoying trope it's a hurtful trope and I'm done with it I wish people would stay in their own lanes if you have never dealt with infertility or miscarriage um, and you want to write a book and you want to have a character with that be aware that you could put them in the most horrible light and you have no idea what that feels like so ah I'm really angry but it really made me mad I should have mentioned I buddy read this with Aoife from Fred Weasley died laughing and I really enjoyed reading this with her um, I think we both kind of felt the same where we enjoyed it um, but it could have been better and I think we both struggled with like some of those storylines kind of being thrown in and then like just dropped I think that Kate Morton gets better um, her writing gets better with time so I would recommend if someone wanted to start out with Kate Morton try the lake house or the secret keeper is also a fun one um, yeah I would try some later stuff I would not recommend the forgotten garden but um, you know I'm gonna keep it on my shelves I gave it three stars but I keep all of Kate Morton because I just love her so um, so those are the books that I read in April let me know what the best book you read in April was or the worst book because I just went on and on about the worst book I read in April. I'd love to know your thoughts and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!